What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss. I don't know. I couldn't say. Call it. Call it. What? Just call it. Well, we need to know what we're calling it for here. We need to call it. I can't call it for you. Fair. I didn't put nothing up. Yes, you did. You've been putting it up your whole life. You just didn't know. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here. And it's either heads or tails. And you have to say, call it. Look, I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything, call it. All right. Heads in. Well done. Don't put it in your pocket, sir. Don't put it in your pocket, it's your lucky quarter. Where do you want me to put it? Anywhere, not in your pocket. What have been mixed in with the others and they come in just a coin. Which it is. You are tuned in to God's Property Radio. Here are your hosts, Sam and Dan. Welcome back to God's Property Radio. I go by Sam, and this is Coin Toss number 23 of the Coin Toss series here at GPR. The Lord blessed me once again with the opportunity to speak with Paul J. Hansen from Santa Rosa County Jail, and uh, I finally got some questions answered uh, really regarding why is Paul J. Hansen still behind bars and Kent Hovind, why is he free? when their charges coincided. Currently, Paul is speaking with a lot of different uh, professionals and, and and people that can help him in this legal battle. But um, we're all praying really hard. I know that Kent's currently out, but I'm still I'm still praying very, very hard for, for Paul. He's just, it was a pleasure once again connecting with him a year ago and uh, before all of, all of this mess started to occur. So let's just get to the meat of it here. Here is Paul J. Hansen calling from Santa Rosa County Jail. Here we go. Okay, well, I just wanted to kind of catch up with you and see see how things are going. I don't I haven't gotten to talk to you. I've been in the midst of the busy season here at the campground and things have just been insane. So um I did put more money on my account so we can hopefully do this again. So you can you can try to give me a call another day too. You know if anything new comes up. Sure, just just tell uh, just tell Rudy that he contacts me. Okay. Just tell him exactly what time I can call you. I can give him several different times, you know, and then um, then I can usually work it out. Okay. I guess right now I just I I don't I guess I don't fully understand why Kent is out and you're in, and I would like kind of an explanation from you of why you are still facing charges for being involved in this situation that Kent apparently is free of. Sure. My, uh, the, the jury found me guilty. What, what happened here, and it's, it's, a, it's actually a motion that I'm sending in in a couple of days. I'm waiting for a copy to be made. But it's a, it's a motion to uh, vacate the charges or, or a new trial. Uh, or mistrial, based on uh, when they first came after Ken and I, the, uh, there was count one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, they, they found out that count one, two, three, and four were actually illegal, illegal counts to charge us with because courts are ruled that, that we have a right to petition a court and do certain activities to prepare for a court hearing. So they cannot, they cannot convert a crime, a, a right, into a crime. If we have a right to, to file certain papers, they can't convert it to a crime no matter what. Mm. So count one, count one, two, three, and four are basically dismissed. And then uh, the jury found me guilty uh, on count 
uh, five and six. Now, the, my, my complaint is that we spent all this time in trial defending count one, two, and four, putting the jury to sleep, you know, after five days. And, and then uh, these, the count five and six are just minor charges. They're supposed to be like misdemeanors. Now, the other one is paid to 20 years each. So uh, I believe I believe the, the uh, prosecutor did this on purpose to of the, of the issues. Basically, throw a thousand things at you and just just get you to get get the jury and everybody distracted and and, and just stuck on one little thing. Which, if the oh, one little thing was the only thing that was brought into the court, we could have easily focused on that and convinced the jury, at least one member of the jury, that hey, this is. A so basically, what's going on here is the jury didn't find me guilty on count one, two, or or four. So they, but they did find me guilty on count five and six, which are just simple contempt charges. And one of the contempt charges is that I mailed a letter to a title uh, company uh, attorney, telling them that we have a, a legal interest in a property, and the jury deemed it. Uh, Worthy to be contempt of court because they told me not to do anything to put a title. The same letter that I said to the attorney was mailed to me from the clerk because uh, another trustee mailed it to the county clerk to put a lien on the uh, property, which I didn't want to participate with that because I didn't want the court told to put any liens on the property, so I wasn't going to put any lien on the property. So that same exact letter was returned to me from the county clerk. Uh, recording's office, and I didn't send it back to the, back to the county clerk because they, they, they were going to file it, except it was one dollar short on filing fees. They, they needed sixty dollars, and they only had nine dollars. If, if I wanted to cloud the title, if I wanted to be con in contempt, true contempt of court, I would have added one dollar to that letter and mailed it back to the county clerk. I didn't do that. I mailed it. I just simply mailed it to to the attorney to inform for future litigation someday that we have a legal interest in this property. So it, it, it wasn't a cloud on the title. But anyway, the jury doesn't know what even what a cloud is. And there's a cloud on the title. We asked the attorney, uh, was it, uh, you know, if, 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 you, if you were to call up that attorney today and ask him, well, how did you how did you deal with that, client, that title cloud? Oh, nothing. We didn't do nothing. Well, how, how do you get rid of a title cloud? Well, we, he, 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 he would have to admit there never was one. Mm. There never was one. I'm sitting in jail for, for clouding a title that never existed. So the imaginations of the jury. Um, terrible. Terrible. And then the other contempt charge is because they, uh, they told me to come from Nebraska to take the prints in Florida. And I wrote them a letter. And I, or I, I emailed them and wrote them a letter. I said, I want you to tell me which law requires me to have a duty to to fly to Florida to get fingerprints, especially when I can walk two, two blocks to go to a federal courthouse in Nebraska to get my fingerprints. Hmm. My attorney even told me, he said, that's just pure harassment. Anybody else, they would have just had him go down to the courthouse in, uh, in Nebraska and get my fingerprints. I wouldn't have had trouble with that. But no, they just, they just harass you. And then, uh, so they did a contempt record for that, even though they wouldn't tell me which law they required, they relied upon to have me fly to Florida. So of course. Why would I? Why would I fly to Florida when they don't even want to tell me which written law requires me to fly to Florida? And then the judge says, "Well, you can't. You can't dispute that. You gotta fly to Florida to dispute that." Oh, that's calling notice is paramount. That's a maximum. Paramount. They were supposed to, as a good neighbor, and by law, I believe, actually tell me which written law, written by Congress, requires me to show up in, in Florida. And they refused to do that. It only took them 10 seconds to do it, but they refused to do it. Wow. So they, they arrested me. I ended up, I've been down here since last, October 23rd, they arrested me, so I've been sitting in jail ever since. Just, just wicked, just wicked. Right. My, and my activity didn't hurt, didn't delay any sales, didn't encumber any property, didn't threaten nobody. All I told 
an attorney is that someday we're going to be going into court and we're going to uh, assert our claim on that property that we believe the United States government, that their agents actually stole that property from the trust. See, the government can't steal anything. It takes agents to do it. Right. Agents actually stole that land ministry. They're, they're in big trouble. They don't, I, they don't have authority for this. What is the uh, sentencing for, or as far as how, how long is the sentencing? My attorney says if they follow the law, it'll be between four months to six months. He says if they don't follow the law, it'll be four years to six years. Huh. He says they probably won't follow the law. Okay. So what are you doing as far as having legal help right now at all? Any Anything right now, or is it just you representing yourself? I, I represent myself. I don't like to use that term. And then I have Sixth Amendment counsel. Uh, I have Sixth Amendment counsel uh, to this entire thing. Okay. Um, when When is the sentencing exactly? Uh, the 21st of this month. So less than two weeks. Okay. Do you think that this is going to drag on, or do you think that they're going to push back the sentencing again, or, or what? No, I think they're going to uh, sentence this time. Better they're going to. I put some really good briefs in there to have this whole thing dismissed. I think there's it's a there's a strong possibility that they're going to have to dismiss the entire case. So uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, it's it's just it's just bobbled. The whole thing is just a mess. The, the basket case, man. I, I, I believe in my perspective, they first of all. There's going to be a day when the IRS agent is going to be put in a common law setting, and he's going to be asked, "What did what Scott Schneider, the IRS agent, what did you rely upon at Kent Hole and had a legal duty to withhold taxes from the uh, creation of science evangelism workers?" He, he's not going to have it. He doesn't. He not. He does not have a legal answer for that. He has no legal standing that he can prove that is a legal duty to withhold tax. Their whole case is done. This question is the question that I told Kent's attorney and to ask Scott Schneider to witness the and he refused to do it. And the reason he refused to do it is because he would get blacklisted. He would be hounded by the IRS the rest of his life if that attorney asked the question. Hmm. Because Kent would have went free, IRS was exposed, uh, and then uh, the attorney would have been harassed the rest of his life by the end. We have 60 seconds remaining. But that's not going to go away. We got, we got a thousand people that will step forward and subpoena Scott Schneider in, and ask that question. So if, he kills a, if they kill a hundred of us, <laughs> he's still going to be in that witness chair to ask, answer, answer that question. Right. Um, you want me to call you back? Yeah, call me back. Okay, I'll call you back. All right. Okay, so to me, what it sounds like, and I think a lot of the people that are following this right now, I think that um, it just looks really bad that Kent just got out and you're you're basically staying behind. Like, I think that looks really fishy. Well, especially when there's no cloud on the title. The attorney testified that I clouded the title. There's no cloud on the title. Right. Are there any other updates uh, going on right now? You think, like, I mean, anything that you can update me on? Yeah, I, I haven't. That title. I'm sorry. The process has to be done to lift that cloud. Either the person that put the document in has to has to go in and, and remove that document from the file, or court order has to be written to remove that document from the file. There's nothing. There's nothing to remove. There is no cloud. Hmm. I, you know, for a cloud in the title, and there is no cloud. Right. And all the other charges have been dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Boy, oh boy. It, it, it's, it, it, it's, I, I've been in jail close to a year. Close to a year. That can destroy people's lives, relationships, health. This is not, this is bad. This is bad for people in America that allow this. Mm hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience so far there? I mean, is it have, have you felt threatened at all, or I mean, is it safe enough for you there, or has it been kind of sketchy? Oh no, you can you can be beat up at any time in this place. I've seen many people beat up. Uh, Ken Holman was almost beat up. Uh, my roommate was almost beat up. 
uh, you know, they're just, just seconds from being beat up. Fortunately, the guards got here in time. It's, it's, uh, it's wicked. It's wicked because uh, we told these guards for weeks to get these certain people out of here. They were, they were a white supremacist group, and uh, they didn't do it. They wouldn't do nothing. It's, uh, it's evil. It's evil. And the, uh, there's nothing to do in here. You're lucky to get a book to read. You try to watch TV, you can't hear it because everybody's talking. Uh, there's nothing on TV anyway. I've only watched TV for an hour, I think, at the most in here, maybe two hours. Um, for the last, you know, nine months that I've been here. Um, the food is horrible. Um, people come to visit, and the guards say, uh, well, the machine's down, so they can't visit. Well, when's it gonna be, when's it gonna be fixed? We don't know. You can wait. So people wait two hours. Um, machine's still down, so you can't visit. They're, they're too lazy to, to allow you to go to a room and visit like it used to be. They, they got rooms down there where you can actually visit with people that, it's just pathetic. It's, it's pathetic. That's why the Bible says not to have prisons. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons not to have prisons. And uh, I, I can testify to that. All this is is a place for uh, criminals, how to teach other criminals how not to get caught when they get out. That's the biggest biggest thing that's accomplished here, I think. They go out and do the same crime, and they're, they're just more, they're better criminals when they get out of here. Do you have access to a Bible? Oh, yeah. They get, you get plenty of spiritual material here. That's, that's everywhere. Uh, um... You can only read so much of that. <laughs> yeah, we have we have access to a there's a little there's a little book card that comes around and you might be able to find a book on it that's worth reading, but uh, it's it's very limited. Most people here are not intellectual, so they're they don't care. You know, they don't they don't read anyway. Right. I I, I read every day and and uh, relatively high IQ and I, I I starve if I don't have something to read. Yeah. Have you been in contact with any of your family or anybody at all, like, lately at all, or not? Not for six months, probably. They, they pretty much blacklisted me. Right. So, again, again, this, this whole prison system, once again, just basically ruins your reputation. It's horrible. It's just totally counterproductive for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to take Kent's case back into court, into a common law court. The reason we can take it into a common law court, because Kent's activity wasn't, was not evidence that's being done on United States property. There's no United States uh, contract involved. There's no United States uh, legal nexus in any way. So it's right for the common law court. This common law court, uh, no U.S. judge is allowed to interfere, and uh, no attorneys are allowed. So you get you get you get a lot of latitude there. You put you put those IRS agents in the witness stand. And nobody's going to stop your questions. Now, when you're in the U.S. court, you start asking IRS witness witness questions. The, the judge will cut you off. Mm -hmm. So the judge is trained how to protect the IRS. The IRS collection of taxes and enforcement of taxes is probably the, probably the greatest scam that's ever been created in the history of the world as in the, in the area of generation of, of money. Mm -hmm. Greatest scam in the history of the world. What do you think? And uh, just, yeah. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, do you think that that um, Kent is safe at this point, or do you think that they're going to try to get him back in there? Oh no, they'll try to get him back in here. They might even they might even frame him. They might kill him. People are, people are killed people are killed on a monthly basis in America over this stuff. You just don't know about. It. I, I know I know several people that are, that are high level at this and they've been killed. Aaron Russell, for example, a lot of people knew him. He put Prio and the Passion together. Right. A friend of mine knew his family. He uh, he was he came down with extremely rare cancer. My friend contacted the family. The family doctor told told him that there's no reason why this Aaron Russell should have ever had this cancer. And they concluded that when Aaron was on the road, that they gassed his room, knocked him out, went in and injected uh, extremely uh, active cancer cells into his blood system. And he was dead within a few months. Hmm. Well, that's, you know, I wanted to say something since you mentioned freedom to fascism. Um, it seems like a lot of what you do and have been doing 
should have been implemented into freedom to fascism because that that was kind of like the missing link. Like, why can the IRS do all these things and they never explained it fully? Exactly. <laughs> you bet. I uh, <laughs> so I sat there and watched freedom to fascism. And I man, if you would have had me on that program, it would have been so much better. The, the, the most important aspect of the IRS relationship to people is by contract, and they didn't talk about contract. There is no law. There is no law that you can go ask. It's contract. It's an implied contract. You're there because they... See, if you say that you're in a city, county, or state, or United States, or a, a U.S. citizen, or a resident, if you, if, you, if, you, if you say any of that, or if they say it, you don't rebut it, you're considered subject to the United States Code. If you, if you say that you uh, are in a U.S. Zip code zone. Your the, the judge can take that as judicial, basically judicial evidence that you're subject to the federal tax. Because all those all those terms are associated with you doing activity on land owned by the government. Owned by the government. If you if you own a piece of land and I do work on that land, you can charge me a tax. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's a, it's a consensual thing. I go on your land, do work. You can charge me a tax for that. Every relationship with the United States is contractual. Every relationship. The draft is contractual. Uh, every single relationship with the United States is contractual. None of it is, is an inherited uh, duty. Not a, single, not a single aspect of the United States is an inherited duty. Not even the draft. You know, you, you mentioned earlier that um, you don't like to w- use the word defendant. Uh, or, or, def- or word, not defendant, um... What was it? Rep- representing. I said, you rep- where are, you, are you representing yourself? And you said you don't like to use that word. Well, we, a, friend of my, a friend of ours that was in a law, a law class with me, he, he asked his attorney, he says, well, you represent me as a, uh, as a living man. And the attorney says, no, I can only represent fictions. <laughs> <laughs> I can only represent fictions. Now, guess who, guess who creates fictions? The United States. Anytime you're represented by an attorney... You're, you're, you're telling the court that you're a created fiction. You're a standing fiction. You're regulated by United States written law. You don't want to be there. You want to have Sixth Amendment counsel as Sixth Amendment counsel was in 1791. Now, uh, as far as the word defendant, every, every state, you know the definition of defendant? I only did it in Nebraska, but every state is going to define defendant as a legal person. A legal person, not a, not a living man, a legal person. If you're a legal person, you're a created fiction. All created fictions are governed by United States written law. Right. That's the way it is. Right. And, you know, it's interesting, um, you know, when you, when you do say represent, I mean, if you dis- dissect that word, it's like represent. Like, why would you represent yourself? Like, why why wouldn't you just present yourself? Well, don't, don't, don't focus on that. That's, that's going to... That's not true. Represent is an issue with, uh, um, uh, I, I just don't, 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 don't just, don't use that word because we don't, you see, then you'd have to prove it. You don't want to do that. You don't want to get you into your position in court where you're arguing about the word represent. Right. Just, just don't, just don't go there. Mm-hmm. Just tell, just tell them that you're a man and that you're a, you have birthright on American, American land. That's all you have to say. I'm a man. I have birthright on American soil. Mm-hmm. See, if you come in as, a, as represented by an attorney, you're a, you're a fiction. You're not standing there as a man anymore. You're you're a regulated fiction. Right. Well, what's <clears throat> the difference? They can serve a warrant to a regulated fiction a lot, a whole lot simpler than they than they can serve a warrant to a living man of birthright. Mm-hmm. The Bill of Rights, one through ten. They do not apply to fictions. They apply to the man. Makes a huge difference when they serve a subpoenas on you. Makes a huge difference when they pull you over for uh, supposedly driving without a license and so forth. If uh, if you're if you're if you're operating under a license, you're a fiction. You, you're you're processed completely different in the in the legal system. But if you do not present that license, then you then you have to be processed under all due process under all. Uh, Bill of Rights. Right. Huge difference. 
Right. And you know what? Can you share any stories? Because I know that you said you didn't drive with a license. I mean, did you run into any problems with that? Yeah, Nebraska's a real toughie, but we're, the last several ones I've been in, they're, they're, they've been, we've beaten them. Uh, Missouri, and, no, Mississippi, yeah, Missouri and Florida were 14 for 14. And we, we simply go in and say, when they give us a ticket, we, we go in and challenge uh, immediately force the person giving the ticket to uh, make a oral statement that uh, that we are one regulated. We have 60 seconds remaining. Under the, the, the Department of Motor Vehicles. He's not going to want to do it because it puts him in liability. So they, they've been, they've just been dropping the, dropping the cases. It's a, I mean, that's a simple way of saying it, but uh, when I get out, people can get on the website and we can, we can show them how to do it. Absolutely. You have to you have to stand under the Bill of Rights when they write you that ticket. Right. I am. Um, you present a driver's license to them. You're in big trouble. It's a whole lot harder. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna. I have to get back to work here. Can we? Can I'll call Rudy and I'll try to schedule another uh, call with you again this week or or next week or something. Yeah. 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 Rudy. Rudy just pages me here, then I call Rudy real quick, and then uh, he can tell me what to do. Okay, I'll let you go. Thanks for calling me. Thanks, Paul. We're praying for you. Great. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. And I'm back. And it was a pleasure once again to speak with Paul Hansen. I think he had a lot of valid things to say. And I, I feel like I got a better hold on the current situation myself. I just really keep him in my prayers daily here. And um, like, I, like I had said on the intro, it's, you know, half the battle's over. We got Kent out, but still got Paul in and I know a lot of people don't know about Paul so we want to do our best to try to cover this uh, since sentencing is coming very very soon we just pray for another miracle that Paul would be let go I, I truly believe that all the things that Paul said in regard to the legal battle and uh, you know the relationship with the contractual obligation to the United States uh, corporate entity so to speak I think that's all valid that's something again that I've been drawn into since the beginning of my realization of the new world order and things like that. So, um, for any of you guys coming into this episode and haven't checked out God's property radio before, or haven't checked out the coin toss series before, go back, check out all the coverage that we've done at freekent.com. Uh, all these coin tosses are to help Kent Hovind and Paul Hansen while they are behind bars and be sure also to check out God's property media.bandcamp.com. That will have the we Demand Ho Vindication album, uh, which you can download. It's a bunch of various Christian artists that have contributed their talents uh, to uh, raise awareness and, and funds for Paul and Kent. And we also have We Demand Ho Vindication t-shirts available. They're all black, and we have sizes small through, I believe, double XL, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we still got a plethora of those left laying around. If anybody wants to order those, you can go to freekent.com and order both the album and the shirt to help our brother in bonds here. Yeah. uh, In regards to coin toss episodes for the future, I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, I'm trying to get in touch with Greg J. Dixon of the Indianapolis Baptist Temple case, which is very popular amongst this whole legal circle. If you go back to the coin toss that I rebroadcasted the Robin Wright, um, you know, government takeover of corporate churches, all that stuff. Um, I know he mentioned that case went in that spiel. I'm hoping to do a, a very extensive uh, interview with Greg J. Dixon, and I'm not sure if it's going to end up a coin toss or if it's going to end up a just monthly broadcast. So we'll see where it lies, what God wants to do with it exactly. So, um, yeah, in other news, I'm trying, I do have an interview scheduled this week for a normal God's Property Radio episode on eugenics with Andrew Hoffman. Very excited about this. Um, you know, pray that this goes well. I'm, I'm pretty pumped to hear the history of, of eugenics and all that. And I think this really does tie to what Kent Hovind was talking about. I mean, the Darwinian evolution, the Darwinian eugenics, all of these things stem from the same seed there. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of these episodes pan out uh till the new year. And as, as I had mentioned, I think on episode 23 of our normal series, uh, uh, the one with the B guy that we just did, um, you know, there is going to be some changes and some new series, uh, possibly going on and whatnot. But, um, 
keep us in your prayers. Keep GPR in your prayers. Keep GPM in your prayers. Um, just so many cool things I think the Lord has on the horizon for all of us here. And uh, a lot of different friends that we've made through doing this that are getting involved. And I'm just pumped. I want to help enable people more um, to do, you know, things like Dan and I do and things that, you know, musicians or artists or designers or whatever, whatever your thing is, you know, hit us up. You can email God's Property Radio at gmail.com or God's Property Media at gmail.com if you'd like to just hit me up directly. Uh, Dan's kind of running the GPR account at this point. Um, so yeah, more to come. Stay tuned. I'm hoping to talk to Paul at least one more time before the sentencing. And until next time, don't buy into what the world is selling. This is the epitaph of a tantrum throne. Creator drops favor on the land through the hand of the average Joe. The champ is home. Now come up off your watch socks, iPhone, and the throne We show button sabotaging it Your only option is arson or dodging it So stop drop, then you dodge like the rams in the thicket Lambs in the digits of the hands in the land of bones West side of the train tracks, black set of land Room to your elephant, backpacks evident Heaven sent grace to the blackjack residents Eloquent, we some rat pack predicates Snakes try to swallow them rats like Tom Green But watch y'all three light up as on E, arm, double leg, arm, heads missing the arm, knee, and the house needs nails at least like arm three. We so Vegas from Lake Mead to Rampart, Agassiz, D Street, C Springs, and Clark. We seen Elohim fade all that scam art. Mary where the empty cemetery is the landmark. One to the bank, three to the head, sin city red, giving sin city red like in the bay, that's pray when you show up. This mini bed, peace to the dead. Sin city red, give it sin city red right now. Right, right, right now. Better watch out on them streets with the alphabet dead over dead presidents When them streets turn to presidents Washington MLK Came to visit, came to play, now pay like you wait Can't pay, get stuck, now stay, now you on prey Granddaddy was the first black blackjack dealer Didn't have to be 21 to see my first stripper Found out something about Mary Ben Stiller She carried the baby that could have been killed by a grip of the baby killer The city I'm in, the city of sin Keep praying for the city, amen Stop chasing cat dog, stepping in rent Took over Vegas Main Street to the wind West side, I learned to spit like phlegm Feather and brim, used to throw up a six Stomp you out with the Timbs Then he hit me with the spirit like a clip that extends Blam. One to the bank, three to the head Sin city red, giving sin city red like in the bay, let's pray when you show up. This mini bed, peace to the dead. Sin city red, give it sin city red right now. Right, right, right now. Down, 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 down. Uh, one to the bay, three to the head. Sin city red, give it sin city red like loud. Down, 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 down. Up. Raised in the bay, let's pray when you show up. This mini bed, peace to the dead. Sin city red, give it sin city red right now.